Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Ceftech. How are you guys doing today? How's life? And just in case you're wondering, I'm feeling pretty good as well. We are back in the nether because we need a few resources. One of them is glowstone. Of course, it's not going to be 17 pieces. We need far more, but you know, we have to start somewhere. And the other one is magma blocks. Hello. Oh, that's plenty. What are you doing? Finding glowstone in this stupid nether is incredibly difficult. Yeah, I would say this is enough. We can go home. So first off, we're going to add a little bit of quartz to our sword. We can add more. 17 attack damage. That's not bad. Today we're going to go on a very small adventure in order to find packed ice. And I was hoping before we go, we might get geared up. But just before we go, I was hoping that we would be able to get a few quality of life improvements for our smeltery over here. And obviously what I mean by quality of life improvement is clocks. I was checking if there is an easier recipe to get sticks. And you can just make it with slabs. Until now I was literally chopping them down manually. I'm hoping that these guys also work like cyclic clocks and you can turn them on and off. Hopefully. Oh, there is an option. Okay. Another very small quality of life improvement that we're going to have is that we're going to try and make some soul forge steel. This is my very weird way of automating stuff. I thought I heard a gasp. No, we have 21 soul urns, 21 iron and 21 coal dust and all of them goes inside. Now that we also have access to nether bricks, I was thinking maybe we make the advanced alchemical condenser from rustic because that will give us access to far better potions. Okay, so we're going to make the alchemical condenser itself and then we're going to need three of these retorts. And obviously as usual, we are going to have a dedicated place for this alchemical condenser, but for the moment, we just want some potion. I'm hoping that I'm making the correct one. This is supposed to be night vision for eight minutes. Okay, correct. And we're also going to have two potions of speed. We have 17 pieces of soul forge steel ingots and I think that should be enough in order to make the chest plate. Yeah, cause you need 12, 14. This is the part where you have to listen to the lush, the forgerer. That doesn't sound very nice. Blacksmith, we get leather strips so that we can make leather straps. Aha. Uh -huh. Then we take two hemp cloth, mix it with feathers and we will get padding. And once we have the padding, we can make the plate armor, which we have to do it in that one. Here is one plate armor. And if I'm not wrong, here is our chest plate, which is not a quest. Looks very disproportionate. I'm not sure which one is cheaper. Should we make the leggings or the helmet? Without any enchantments, we are getting three armor toughness and eight armor, which is not that bad. Limited enchantability. What? Block reach. It's an enchantment from cyclic and it will increase your building and mining reach. Can I reroll? It seems, no, you cannot re-roll that. You cannot even put protection on it. Weird. Well, it's Lush the Forgerer, so what do you expect? We get garbage armor, which is already damaged. Why? I don't know, but for some reason you cannot put enchantments on it, so it's not the best. But for us, it's okay, because this was supposed to be my temporary armor until we get into Abyssal Craft. And since we're going adventuring, we're going to need a bed, and we also need to make a Silky Jewel, which does not require an emerald, and I'm fine with that. Since we are going to need packed ice, we need something to harvest it. The way that I understood this mod pack, we have to go north in order to find cooler biomes. And traveling like this is really nice. Oh, this is useful. Vein miner is so nice. Well, it's definitely getting cooler because we're getting spruce. Oh, wow. A frozen ocean. Nice. And there are ore samples on ice. That is what I was looking for. I forgot to mention that the entire reason I forgot to put ore excavation on this. I forgot to mention that the entire reason that we came on this expedition is to try and get packed ice so that we would be able to power our thermoelectric generators. And in hindsight, yes, I should have made a pick, but I thought a silk touch shovel is going to be more useful. I just forgot to put excavation on it. So it was a good plan. I just didn't execute it very well. But we have more than two stacks. That's enough. Yeah, I would assume that is enough. Now that it's nighttime, let's go to the darklands. Maybe we will find some shadow gems. And this is why we have night vision and speed. And there's a big guy. I think he's a big guy. Oh, no, he's not. This is salt. That is a lot of salt. Salt is actually very useful because we can make bread. Oh, there is a big guy. That's the one we want. And lag. 
Did you destroy the drops? No. Okay, we have four. That's not bad. We are technically done with our exploration, but there is something that I want to check out. If you guys remember, a few episodes ago, we found a swamp in order to go to the between lands, but I also found something which I thought it's antimatter because I was hearing explosions underground. I don't think antimatter is something that we're going to need at this very moment, but if we have access to it early on, it will be nice. So this is where I have marked it. And I guess we have to dig down. Calcified paraffin. Oh, it's just brown dye. Well, I was kind of correct because there's a spawner for anti-zombie and probably a zombie and an anti-zombie met and there was an explosion. So there's no antimatter over here. But what kind of loot do we get? Nothing. Okay. I just realized that last episode, I made a very slight boo-boo. This is the connector. This was the relay. So no wonder it was not working. You should work now, right? Yes. We're getting RF. Okay, so let me make more thermoelectric generators. That is a creeper. As I was saying, let me make more thermoelectric generators, upgrade this guy, then I'll be right back. I hooked up the coke oven to thermoelectric generators and each one of them is making us 40 RF per tick. Each preheater is consuming 32. So one is not enough for both of them, but we're also generating like 16 RF in excess. And this is why the buffers are almost full. The blast furnace is also hooked up to thermoelectric generators and this one is also making us steal really fast. But the main issue that we have is that our production is not fast enough. Cause the thing is, in order to finish this age, we need to start making a pump jack and extract oil. And this is how much steel we're going to need in order to make just one pump jack. But wait a minute, it gets much better. We also need a distillation tower to process that oil. And then we're going to need either a boiler or a solar tower. And finally, we need to get into modular machinery in order to make propane, liquid plastic, and plastic sheets. So that's a lot of steel. What I'm trying to say is that I'm not exactly sure if we can finish this age today. Oh, you don't have an input on the bottom. Okay, and you keep it. That's very good. So we put you here and let you charge. Since we are going to need a lot of steel, I was hoping that I would be able to do some of the grind on my own and not make a metal press. Cause technically we can get steel rods like this. But now that I'm thinking, we're wasting it. A metal press will give you two. Aha, uh -huh. this is going to be a very crazy process, so you have to bear with me. The thing is, we need paper. And in case you're wondering, this is how we make paper, which essentially gives you pulp and you have to put it on a drying rack. Of course, once we get into modular machinery, we can automate this, but for the moment, this is life. Now we make the blueprints for the engineer's desk. This one is for molds, components. We don't need the projectiles, but let's make it anyway. The thing is, this is going to save us a lot on resources. If we want to make an iron mechanical component, if we use a crafting recipe in a crafting table, we need four iron plates. But if we use an engineer's workbench, with the blueprint, we only need two. We need those components in order to make the engineering blocks, especially the heavy engineering block, which is relatively expensive. But it is also going to require electrum. And we already got a little bit of silver from a galena vein, so we're fine. We can make electrum. Let's make 16 of you. And how many heavy engineering blocks can we make? Six. Then we need some vacuum tubes, which is an achievement. And we do have a very crazy recipe in order to make the redstone engineering block, but we can make five, which is really good some steel scaffolding and for the conveyor belts we need leather because the thing is i used most of my leather for my stupid armor and here is our conveyor belt which was also an achievement i would assume making a metal press is relatively straightforward all we need is a heavy engineering block on the top to conveyor belts we flip you and you should form yes you do. We also need a press mold for rods, which goes over here. I don't think 40 RF per tick is going to be enough, but uh, we don't have that many options. So will you make a rod? But you do. How? And I do understand that this is not very safe, but it is fine by me. We have rods and of course a metal press. All right, guys, now that we have the metal press, we should work on getting a core sample drill, which is going to require more iron mechanical components and it's not expensive at all. And here is a sample drill. We also need to have a very small capacitor. I already made one, but uh, we're using it over here. So we might as well try to make another one. And there you go, one LV capacitor. This core sample drill that you see in front of you is from immersive engineering. Originally, its function is to try and look in a chunk. You can see the chunk boundaries in order to find some ores from immersive engineering 
engineering so that you can use an excavator. But when you have immersive petroleum in the mod pack, it will also look for fluids like water and oil. But the main issue is we need to provide it with RF and this is why we needed a capacitor bank so we need to charge it as well. For those of you who don't know, a capacitor bank from immersive engineering can be configured the way that you want and all you need is a hammer and you just right click. Orange is always output and blue is input and this is nothing and you can do it on any site that you want and just in case you're wondering you can also break it and if you put it back it will keep the configuration of course this does not only apply to the capacitor bank it also applies to tanks and i think the pump you're charging right good i do not want to find oil in the middle of my base so we're going to go that way because if we find oil in the base we need to do a lot of redecoration yeah i would say from here it's fine we just hook it up to power and shift right click did we find something new? No. I think we found oil? Yeah, <laughs> it's near our base. That's good. There's a thing from immersive engineering where you can place down these samples, but I forgot the name of that block. It's not a huge reservoir. It's just like 9,000 buckets. I'm not completely sure if we have enough material to make a pump jack today, but I'm definitely sure that we're not able to power it because it is going to consume 1,024 RF just to make 15 milli buckets per tick. Each one of these guys is 40. <laughs> the recipe for a pump jack was not that bad, so I managed to gather everything we're going to need and we're going to assemble it here. A projector is never a very bad idea, but unfortunately, I always forget to make it. But this is also not the most difficult machine that we have to make. I would say it looks okay? Maybe? Yeah, it is. So this is going to be where it's going to drill and these are the outputs. One on this side and one on this side. And the power is up here. Now we need to see how many thermoelectric generators we can make in order to power that thing. As usual, you should remember that we're not extremely wealthy people, so we're going to start with six of them. And this seems to be a correct pattern? Yeah. I would say so. Of course, you should remember that this is not going to be enough power in order to generate oil at maximum efficiency, but at least it should generate some very slowly. For transporting fluids, we have access to metal barrels from immersive engineering, which is really good. Fluid pipe from immersive engineering does not have an extract option. So unless you have a machine which is going to auto output on its own, the pipe is useless. Luckily for us, this is going to auto output. And I would assume we can just put the tank over here. You don't connect. Do you work from the top? Yes. We're getting oil. It's very slow. <laughs> Actually, for the achievement itself, we just need one bucket. Uh, it didn't work because we need to make that stupid circuit board. Okay. I'm also thinking maybe we can have another barrel over here for creosote oil. The output that you see in the front is for cold coke. And if you want to insert items, you do it from the top. Making a circuit board is not a very bad recipe because the only thing that we need is insulating glass. And that is going to require iron grit, which you can get it from a grindstone. And it is relatively fast. Very good. And thankfully, we have already found cactus, so making a green dye is not going to be a problem. Ladies and gentlemen, our first circuit board. And we got three advancements. Very good. Unfortunately, we do not have enough resources in order to make the distillation tower, but I was hoping that we can focus on some other quests. For instance, a drawer controller does not seem to be a very bad idea, because I think we are going to need this in order to get into simple storage, if it is available in this mod pack and if it is unlocked in the next age. Even if it's not, it's actually a very useful thing to have anyways. So this drawer controller on its own is not the worst. The only thing that we need is nether amethyst which thankfully we already have 12 of it so we can at least make one drawer controller we have extra redstone engineering blocks which is really good and we also take you and ladies and gentlemen our first drawer controller which is also a quest another thing that i have noticed is that now we have access to modular machinery and the reason that we needed the circuit board was to make the controller and the circuitry i was going through the recipes and it seems these machines don't actually consume that much rf you see it's 5 rf 20 rf 4 rf 10 and 5. so basically what that means is that with two thermoelectric generators we can literally power all of them so i'm actually thinking maybe we should get into that because one of them is extremely useful yeah this one the mixer we can make dough we can make leather the multi-block structure for the mixer is honestly not that bad we can make it because we also have a crazy amount of modularium plates so here is a machine circuitry i'm also making some redstone alloy because in order to make the controller we're going to need redstone alloy gear and this is the controller which is also an advancement it seems what we need is an input hatch for items i told you guys that we are filthy rich on ores but the problem is that right now we're burning through everything this chest 
used to be full. Here is our fluid input hatch. Then instead of a hopper, we need to make an upper, which I had no idea this thing exists. But we're going to use it in order to make an output. And we use our final engineering block in order to make a tiny energy input. And the rest of the plates, I think we just convert them into casings. We also need to designate an area for our industrial machines and I have no idea where to do it because over there we have the tree from the between lands and if we put something next to it which looks industrial it will just look weird and that color palette that we have over there does not fit with industrial builds so maybe we go this way because we also need a flat area which is not filled with holes this hole is fine it is perfectly fine this is for testing purposes and to see if everything is going to work according to plan so item input fluid input energy input and small output one more thing that i forgot is a cauldron another thing that i also forgot was to make the machine vent and it is going to require iron bars when we were in the twilight forest i took some of them exactly four but look at the recipe so i'm very glad we stole some the cauldron goes in the center and the vent goes on top and I'm so happy that you're not orange. We have a little bit of a situation over here and I have no idea how to solve it and that situation is water. I was hoping that we have access to immersive engineering pumps so that we would be able to use one water source in order to provide water for our machines because that machine that we have over there is going to require a lot of water. But we do not have access to pumps and this is going to be a slight problem. So we need to come up with some solutions. I'm thinking about jerry cans because if I'm not wrong these guys can hold 8 buckets, right? but you cannot pick it up. Ah, we can find the solution for it later on. The thing is, I was hoping to do it automatically right now, but maybe we have to wait until the next age. Or maybe there is a better way, but I just don't know how it works. But for the moment, let us see if our new machine works and let us try to make some bread. So we need flour and we need salt. Then I did fill in these barrels with water and I'm just hoping that it will pump the water automatically. It is. Okay, that's good. That's really good. I also brought our capacitor bank and some wire connector. So you go over there, you go over there and we connect you. Oh, I forgot about the blueprint. No matching recipes found. Why? I was thinking maybe it is the wrong salt. Should I break you and replace you? This is flour. It should give me dough. Yes, our problem is it does not have power. Now it's working. Okay, very good. It's not the fastest thing in the world, but at least I don't have to do it manually. Now that our new industrial base is going to be slightly far away from our main base, I was thinking how do we travel over there? So of course we can have path blocks and that will help us walk faster. And maybe once in a while we can have a totem that will give us a speed boost. And for lights, I was thinking of floodlights from immersive engineering. I just fell into a hole. Before I fell into a hole, I was going to tell you guys that this floodlight is one of the best blocks ever made. So obviously you can rotate it with your hammer and if you hold shift, it will go the opposite way. And of course we can put it this way so that it's much better. And the main reason that I did not use it that much is because I had no idea how it works because you make it and then you're like, okay, how do you power it? The way that you power it is that you are going to need a capacitor. You're going to put it on output, add a connector and then take a light voltage wire coil and just hook it up to here. So now it's working. And the best thing about that guy is that it is going to illuminate an area which is 32 blocks. So it's a huge range and we don't have to spam torches. And I would assume it's only consuming like 5 RF per tick. Let us also try and make a speed totem. A totem can be 6 blocks high and this is only 5, it's fine. The horse totem seems to give you speed. And of course you're also going to need a base totem. So do I have speed? Yes. What is the range? So maybe this is one of the totems that you cannot stack it up because the range is not the best. It's like until here, but the speed it gives you is crazy. Okay, then that's a nice solution, I guess. And I forgot to mention the most important thing about the floodlight. You need to invert the signal and look at the area which it's illuminating. It's amazing. The jerry can might have been garbage in order to carry water, but for making treated wood, it's going to be amazing. And just FYI, it had 8 buckets, so this is why we could make one stack. The thing is, we are going to need to invest in some water mills from immersive engineering, which is a quest. Do we have more oil? Yes. We also start making a windmill, which is also a quest. I just noticed that today we did manage to do a decent amount of achievements. That's nice. We're not going to set up the windmill and the water wheel today, but I was hoping since we're going to need to power those machines and floodlights on the way, we might have a setup over here. Because this is a river and it does make sense to have water wheels over here. Of course, we're going to need a lot of them because I'm not going to make the most efficient water mills. I'm just going to make the one which looks uh, 
natural hopefully because you have to surround this stupid thing with like four water sources and it just looks weird anyway guys i think it's also a good time to wrap up the episode <laughs> thank you so much for watching and i hope you enjoyed it till the next one bye bye